Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. We are back with one of the best coaches in the world. Yes, world renowned. He is Randy Swam. Yes, you are, as well as a Marshall, uh, Marshall Goldsmith certified coach, uh, let alone yep. help so many people with coaching for relevance over the years. Uh, welcome. There's really no introduction that could do you justice. So I'll have you ask. Uh, tell us about yourself. Well, and then we'll I'll get right you, into the conversation. Well, I'll tell you what, I, you know, you, you know, coming on a show with you is, uh, is very honorable to me. So I appreciate that. But I, uh, but I, I, I will say this, actually, one of the most recent things, I think most everybody knows that my background is in aviation and uh, particularly military aviation, retired military guy. And I've been training and uh, developing uh, uh, jet pilots and flight crews for about the last 24 years. But, uh, uh, you know, back in uh, the, the, the first uh, decade of this century, you know, I got uh, certified uh, as a coach and, um, and uh, so I've been, that's my passion to bring uh, that freedom to potential and every, and all those across my path. And I, and I will say this, that one of the things that uh, just happened uh, uh, this week is I, I think you uh, know this because um, I mentioned it one time before, uh, Jill, but uh, I've been a founding fellowship partner for uh, the Institute for Organizational Neuroscience over in Germany. And uh, this week, I just received, received my official certification Yay. as as at a as a uh, um, uh, as a real certified uh, neuroplastician, mm-hmm. and and it's at a master's level. And uh, wow. so, so I just got that this week. So now I bring a lot of that and those issues to coaching, but also into helping develop leadership to to develop team dynamics and. And all those kind of things. So that's that's kind of the the newest thing that happened for me just this week. I'm now humbled and honored to be a part of that organization and uh, and uh, and developing the master, helping to develop the master class that uh, is the class people go through to get that certification and everything. And uh, so just honored to be a part of it. Awesome! Congratulations. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Add to the list of accolades. And now last time we were here, you want to do a little recap of what we talked about and you want to kind of add to that today, I know. Yeah, and by I'll, the way, the phone lines are open, 631, uh, if you have any questions, uh, 307-4010. That's 631-307-4010. Cool. And and yeah, we'll take a, uh, I'll mention this but, and I'll highlight a couple of stri- a couple of strategic uh, uh, planning and thinking um, aspects that, uh, that I covered probably about a year ago or more, uh, but uh, but it's important. It dovetails out of last week because, you know, last week we were kind of looking at the aspect and I brought out this aspect that uh, to realize that that uh, uh, diversity and unity are not separate from each other. If you if you truly understand it and everything. And we talked about that a little bit from the leadership aspect in, in working with your people and and things of that nature last week. And uh, but what I'll do is I'll go in and mention uh, uh, a key strategic planning aspect that uh, that sometimes people don't think about too much, and um, and again it'll be uh, a very key and it and it'll dovetail right out of that because when you look at trying to say that everybody on your team doesn't have to be exactly the same type of person mm-hmm. or those kind of things, you know. Uh, you know, that that you don't want. And that's what leaders, true leaders don't really look for that per se. And uh, that can be control freak things. Although we did mention last week, and I think, Jill, you remember this, that, yeah, when you talk about diversity, it's not something where you want to cross a line and almost make it sound like everybody has to pull after you. No, that's not true either. So it's, uh, but it's not that they're totally different. And when you think about that, and when you talk about leading your team in a way that you're trying to bring that, because you know what, when you have people that are diverse a little bit, that, that, uh, you know, have, you know, have a different picture and what they're seeing in a situation, mm-hmm. uh, when they, when they have a uh, insight that's co- coming on scene that may come from part of their background and everything, um, they may have a solution that takes you closer to your goal than, you would have thought or somebody else on your team would have thought. And so that's kind of the benefit of that when you're talking about that. But if you're looking at it from strictly a management standpoint 
and looking at it from this aspect of, well, just do what I told you to do, act like everybody else. This is how we want our people to act and all that kind of stuff. You're sort of overdoing it and you're kind of putting some of that in the in the trash can, if you will. Uh, but it is it leading your team to bring everybody together so that they're really a unified body of people moving in a direction. And the, the strategic planning aspect that I will mention um, that is kind of aligned with that has to do with the concept of, uh, you know, of a strategic vision versus the, uh, uh, you know, the objective, what you're really trying to accomplish uh, in your uh, thing, the mission if, statement, if you will. And those two are more different than most people realize. And it's this, I'll start out with the concept of vision and I and I think I mentioned this in a in a show before, but one coaching client that I had was a uh, an attorney, and when I was asking for him about what his real central why it matters was, which is kind of related to his vision, he said, "Well, it's to win, like you would expect an attorney mm -hmm. to do." But I could tell in his body language that you know, I don't buy what you just said. I don't think it's really affecting you. And I, and I asked him some questions and got him talking about, and all of a sudden when his, you could tell his whole nonverbal communication changed and it shocked him in a positive way that his real vision for his success and his, what he's doing was to be right. You know, whether you lose or win, are you being right in what you're doing? And that kind of blew, his, blew himself away. And it really, as he thought back to it, he realized that's what brought all of what he does to the, to on, on scene. And what's interesting, when you think about your operation or your company or your, your team that you're leading, uh, you know, when you look at what is the vision statement versus the mission statement, the vision statement is not just what, you know, just you want to do this, you want to do this, you want to make this return. No, now, the vision statement, and there's a real good analogy for it. And it has to do with this aspect of like, if you're talking about a swimming pool, mm -hmm. the vision is not about the water, whether it's a certain temperature or how much water is in there. The, the true vision statement is about the impact of the water on the surrounding aspect. So if you were to take all of the water out of the swimming pool, where would the water line be left? You know, mm. what is the impact of the fact that it was there? And so it's really a bigger picture than that. And if you look at it from this diversity and the unity aspect of it, guess what? You can have people that have slightly different pictures of it, but you know what? they're taking your team to the same place, you know, kind of thing. And so the vision statement is not just something that you want to do. What, what You know, somebody says, well, my vision is to just uh, make transportation better. No, I'm sorry. That's not a vision. You know, my vision, as you've heard me say a number of times, and in fact, you can see it here right behind me, is bringing freedom to potential and all those around me. And, yeah. um, and you know, that the way that can be done is – probably a hundred different ways with, based on the people that you're interacting with. But the mission statement is what your team is trying to accomplish and what your team is trying to become. It may be that they want to decrease the, the errors that somebody has made by a certain amount, or yeah. they want to, you know, we had this kind of a return last, you know, last month, we want to increase that by, I don't know, 5% or whatever kind of thing. And, and, and the mission statement is what dr basically you're going to become as a organization or as a team in the next, say, three to five years. You know, what does that look like? And now what you do is you start putting together a strategic plan to take you there. But the vision, the mission statement should be in line with kind of what your vision is you know if my vision is to bring freedom to potential in other people and i keep getting in the way and shutting that down not doing my job mm -hmm. and so when you think about it it's just a, a very simple um strategic mindset that people have to have that is really very different when you're looking at it in light of what we were talking about last week, this diversity, if you understand the vision and like in my case, bringing freedom to potential and all those across my path, guess what? 
everybody that I connect with has a little bit of a different thing in their past that's holding them back, a little bit different thing on why they're not creating the vision for going forward and all of that. And guess what? Each of those people is a little different. And and if and if and if all you're going to do is just create an academic, you know, uh, strategy of it, you're not truly getting the job done. And so that that's just another picture from the um, a strategic mindset that there can be value behind having those different people out there uh, as long as they're pulling together and they're moving in the right direction that is taking your team where you want to go. And, um, and that is uh, just a huge thing. But like I said, last week we were talking about that concept of diversity and uh, unity and how those are not totally separate. You and I can be very different. And yet, you know what? We are so unified. It's not funny. It's not, even, it's amazing, you know, kind of thing. And, and are you leading your teams, leading your people, in a way where that becomes a part of who they are becoming. And, and that's just a key factor, both strategically and just in a leadership aspect that so many people, uh, unfortunately today don't, don't think about in a lot of ways. So it's just something to think about. That's for sure. Thank you. And tell us again, uh, how we reach you. I don't think we even mentioned the website yet or your phone number. Sorry. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, well, you could go to my website and you can actually see it right behind my head here. It's uh, coachingforrelevance.com. It's forrelevance.com. And uh, when you go to uh, coachingforrelevance.com, uh, down at the bottom of the homepage, it shows the uh, uh, my uh, email and my, uh, uh, my cell phone. And uh, as uh, Jill, you know, and I think other people, if they've heard it before, they've heard me say this before, but uh, you don't have to worry about me just giving you a sales call. If you uh, if you just want to have a conversation, we can do that. If you have a need, yeah, we'll come up with something and 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 create a job thing. But it's uh, but if somebody just wants to have a conversation, we can do that too. And uh, uh, so just uh, uh, but if you go to the my uh, homepage on my website at the bottom, you'll see my cell phone and my and there's also a plate. There's also a link on there where you can actually set up a. Uh, an appointment. And so, uh, so it lets people do that. Perfect. Well, let me ask you this. Um, okay. Would you say your, your ability to connect with others, to help them succeed, to drive, to give them that motivation as a coach, was it from your military background? Did it uh, come from know, that? Or what, what would you say? And then he was in aviation too. So, I mean that, that, but just curious, where do you credit yourself? Uh, uh, to be honest, I don't credit myself with it as much as it is that I credit many of the true leaders that I worked with in in the military and how that developed leadership awareness in me. And in fact, I, I've mentioned this, uh, this name, I think, uh, before, but uh, one of the guys that was my a squadron commander when I was uh, uh, in the squadron flying the 335th Chiefs uh, at the 4th Tech Fighter Wing, he, uh, uh, you know, he uh, was uh, just an incredible, credible um, um, uh, squadron commander and uh, um, and all that. And I've learned so much from watching him. And I still say today, in fact, I included him in my autobiography. If anybody gets that, they'll see it kind of thing. But um, um, but he just, you know, the people that I credit are it's amazing when I look back and see the, the, the line and the lineage and the, the journey that my life and journey took because I learned so much, um, um, you know, so much in, in my journey that I've learned a lot of that sort of stuff. And I saw it in operation in the military because guess what? In your squadron or in your unit, you've got different people from different backgrounds and, and different races and and all of that. And um, and it's just uh, uh, it, it is just huge uh, when you do that. But it's not just pure academic. If you're only going to rote superficial academic things, you're missing the boat in mm -hmm. leading your teams and really bringing your organization and your team to true success. 
and um and so i just uh am am, am amazed at my journey and just what it has developed in me and what i observed in some of the incredible leaders with whom i served and uh uh, and all that, and guess, and, and guess, guess what? When you, if you ever have the risk where you may have to go into combat, guess what? You better be able to truly perform for your team's best, and and lead them in such a way where, um, you know, it's just not telling them what to do, and you know, all that kind of stuff. And there's, uh, so it's. Uh, uh, and and by the way, that commander you, you may remember is General is Colonel uh, 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 Myers, uh, Richard B. Myers. He was uh, the uh, actually he was the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff for about seven years, I think. Actually, no, I think it was actually about five years. But he, uh, but uh, uh, I just I had the opportunity of flying with him. I had the opportunity of watching how he interacted with his people and how he led them, and and to this day. I still say that he he's a uh, uh, the best, most amazing leader with whom I've ever served, and um, and I've actually said that in my autobiography too. So it's just it's uh, you know if if all you're doing is going through your journey and trying to just call everybody else to just shut up and do what I say and follow me and boy you you applaud mm-hmm. me even if you don't believe it. You know what? True applause happens when people are applauding you. Not because you said it or because they feel like they have to, but it's a reaction from something they experienced with you. And that's uh, and that's a huge aspect. And guess what? When you're talking about diversity versus the unity, like we were kind of mentioning last week, that all comes into play there as well. So it's a huge aspect of true leadership. Perfect. Thank you. And then um, what else did you want to discuss for today, guys? The lines are open. If you have any questions from directly, please feel free. It's 631-307-4010. 631-307-4010. Ask anything. Get some free advice. Hey, right? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you Can't go. do a whole coaching session. We only got 10 yeah, minutes. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Can ask a good question or something, but yeah, yeah. But but the other part of this too is and and if I was talking to somebody or if I was coaching somebody right now, my next question to them after that discussion would be, so what do you need to do different? Mm-hmm. And I would throw out to people, how do you do that? You know, how do you do that? And the first thing uh, I would say is you have to truly be aware of your people and who they are and where they come from. And the only way that you know that is by your conversations with them and being able to listen to them, even when they're saying something that's kind of a struggle right now, instead of just telling them, do this, do that. But you sit here like this. And if I, and if I was talking to you, Jill, just look at you like this and go, okay, I hear you. Yeah, I get you, you know, kind of thing. And Cause when they think that you're totally, understanding what they're really experiencing that says a lot and mm-hmm. you guys can, can see in my uh, autobiography that's uh uh like i said it's getting close to being published i was gonna um, ask when wait is there any more timeline on that uh there's what they're doing is we're in the process basically all of the edits and just kind of the uh, my colleague over in Germany uh, have been working together. She's got a couple of people that work with her that are just expert grammar people and 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 author kind of stuff. It's my book. It's I'm the author of it, but they're acting acting as a little bit a uh, little bit coaches and stuff. If uh, they had a question on something, but basically the the uh, all the editing is done, and so we basically come up with what was going to be the title of it. And we're looking at uh, we're kind of at the base where we're looking at it and 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 looking at what the uh, uh, the the hard cover is going to look like. What's the picture going to look like on the hard cover? So we're in the process of finalizing that a little bit. So it's getting very close, and uh, and it's uh, I'll definitely uh, you know pass it on when I know when it's going to be available. And it's. Uh, but I'll tell you, you know, the, this aspect of leading and understanding 
the true vision, you know, when you're talking about like my vision of bringing freedom to potential in all those across my path, at any point, if I step in the way of that, I've just taken my own true vision and thrown it in the waste can. And, and so yeah. regard, regardless of what your people are going through, if you, have, if you have uh, five people that work on your team, guess what? Each of them probably has a little bit of a different struggle they're dealing with. Each of them has a little bit of a different background. You know, can you, do you, do you interact with them in such a way, even, even if it's leadership or even if you're having to kind of have a little bit of a disciplinary moment with one, do you do that in a way where even though you're having to correct them, they still kind of experience that vision in what you're doing and how you're connecting with them. And those are some very important and insidious aspects of true leadership, but it's something that true leaders totally understand. And, um, and uh, like I say, Colonel Myers, I just, uh, to this day, I still say he is the most, he was the most incredible leader with whom I ever served or ever observed. And I learned so much just from watching how he interacted and led the squadron and, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, basically when he was a full bird colonel, then he, he, he left the squadron to go up, to be promoted up to uh, a, a higher notch. I actually saw him uh, at a, a function at, at an Air Force base and uh, he and his wife both, you know, recognized me and came over and shook, shook hands and we were just chatting for a minute and everything. And so it's just, you know, it, you know having that vision aspect is critical. What are you really trying to create in your customers out there that they're different about and they experience something different? And if you're not leading and modeling that with your team, why should they go out and even have any idea on how to go out and really model that and do it? And so those are just some key aspects uh, that sort of dovetail from a strategic mindset and a strategic planning aspect that uh, that dovetail right out of kind of what we talked about last week because you know we you know you know like I say uh, diversity and unity are not totally separate they're mm -hmm. not just independent of each other uh, and if you do it right and if you lead your team right guess what both of those can come together to bring a miraculous thing doesn't mean everybody on your team has to do it exactly what this one person wants but you know what you can find out with what each one is accomplishing is taking you and your team right where you want. And so it's, it's just some, you know, basic aspects of bringing what we talked about last week to this sort of strategic planning and thinking mindset. And if you understand that different, the difference between vision and mission statement, if you're looking at your mission statement and your strategic plan, is that really taking and modeling and building your vision? If it isn't, you may need to change it. And so it's just kind of an interesting point on that. Beautiful. Well, we are just about out of time. We got uh, three minutes left here um, and no one has called. Oh, I know okay. like my friend Randy. Huh? Huh? No. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. 631-307-4010. Of course, you can call and ask any question at this point. But let me just ask, in all your years of, well, with your, how many years have you been coaching for specifically? Uh, I became a certified coach in basically 2010. So it's been, okay. about, been about 13 years. And, and, and through that, I've actually gotten, uh, I've, I've uh, applied coaching skills uh, to leadership longer than that, just because it was what was de de uh, you know, developed in me. But in 2010, I gained my first official coaching certification. And I've been uh, uh, doing that. And basically, right about then is when I started my own company of coaching for relevance. And, uh, and I've been uh, uh, doing that ever since. Uh, and so how many clients have you had? Seriously, in all, in oh, all these wow. years? Can oh, you even I guess? I mean... You know, I, I can't really even guess. I mean, it hasn't been two million. It hadn't been, you know, one hundred and fifty thousand or anything like that, um, because a lot of the, uh, 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 you know, a lot of the times where I've had them, I've had some great clients that really experienced some differences. But um, 
but literally for those 10 or actually for these 13 years, not only did I bring the coaching skills to dealing with people and all that, but a lot of it was just applying the coaching aspects of, you know, my company and what I do and the Marshall Goldsmith and all that kind of stuff, uh, bringing a lot of that to different environments like uh, aviation and leading teams and and uh, now neuroscience and and bringing aspects of leadership i mean i have um uh, uh one 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 person that one coach uh, excuse me one client that i worked with was a guy that was a, a senior executive at um uh, uh lexus uh i think it was yeah and uh and what he did is uh, not only that, but at the time he was a um, he was also a, uh, um, a a commander in the Naval Reserve. He was kind of a rear admiral kind of thing um, in that as a as a part timer. And what was amazing is after toward when we got together for the last session. Uh, coaching session, he was blown away because his boss, who was the one that wanted to call a coach in to that, uh, she had told me about halfway through our coaching that she just so appreciated what I was bringing and how I brought it. But he kind of came in and he was blown away. And I said, looks like you're thinking about something. He said that this week, he said that uh, he was talking to their team, which was, I think, I'm, I'm just guessing here, I think was on the aspect of you know 15 or 20 people but she who was his boss was in there at the time and he said while he was going through this in the middle of what he was saying she stood up in her table and she looked at him and went and it blew him away and he looked at her like this and after she clapped for a little bit like this in front of his whole team she goes like this and she just took took her hand down and pointed her finger at him and she said that's what i've been looking for for a long time wow wow and so so it's i've had the honor of working with uh some clients that were very uh uh good very um uh positional in their area um and of course, a lot of it too has been just some people that were attorneys and 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 people that were just looking to work in their organization, but raise themselves so they plan they they could you know plan for promotions and down uh -huh. the road and things like that. But it All also. Right, I'm sorry, Randy. I have to cut you off. We are out of okay. time. And but it was good. I was good. Great stories as always. Uh, one more time, coaching for relevance and Randy Swam. We will touch base again. Is it next week already? Uh, I, I, I think you're back on. I, I think so. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Sounds so we'll good. Double check it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Have a great day, Randy. Bye bye. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world. This is the Podcast Business News Network.